Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. First Iranian fuel shipment enters Venezuelan waters. The US blacklists 33 Chinese companies and firms over alleged links to the PLA. Benjamin Netanyahu appears in court on the first day of the corruption trial. Myanmar submits first report on Rohingya protection to ICJ Exiled activists call foul. African Liberation Day is being celebrated across the world. We begin with the arrival of the first shipment of petrol from Iran into Venezuelan waters. The super tank of Fortune, one of the five sent by Iran from the Mediterranean, reached Venezuela's exclusive economic zone on May 24th and was escorted by a Venezuelan naval fleet. The other four fuel super tankers, Forest, Petunia, Faxon, and Clavel are expected to reach Venezuela later this week. The shipments together carry close to 1.4 million barrels of petrol to Venezuela that has witnessed a severe fuel shortage over the past year because of US sanctions. The administration of Donald Trump has responded aggressively. Venezuela, despite being one of the largest producers of crude oil, lost its refining capacity after most of its refineries situated in the US and other countries were seized or sealed due to the sanctions. On Friday, a US federal court sanctioned the sales of these refineries under CITGO, which is a Venezuelan refiner based in the US. This has been condemned as an act of modern piracy. Last week, there was speculation that the US would use its forces in the Caribbean to block these Iranian supplies. This was after a senior US official hinted at such a measure. This prompted the Venezuelan government to deploy a fleet of naval ships and warplanes to escort the Iranian dispatch. Moving on to our next story, US aggression against China also continued over the weekend. On Saturday, the US Commerce Department blacklisted 33 Chinese firms and institutions for alleged links with China's People's Liberation Army or the PLA. These include Chinese universities and research centers. The US alleged that these firms acted against the interests of its national security without specifying any charges. The US has included seven other firms and research centers over the allegations of aiding the supposed human rights violations in the Xinjiang province. On Friday, news reports revealed that the Trump administration had debated restarting nuclear tests on May 15th with senior security officials. Reports suggested that President Trump wanted to restart the test to pressure China into an arms control treaty with the US and Russia. The 2010 New START signed by US and Russia that halves active strategic warheads in both countries is set to expire in February 2021. Trump apparently wants to include China in the treaty as well, even though it holds only a fraction of the warheads that signatories of START have right now. Moving on to Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appeared in court for his trial on May 24. Netanyahu is being tried on seven criminal charges, including bribery, fraud, and other corruption-related charges, along with manipulating the media. This is the first time in Israeli history that a sitting prime minister will be appearing before a court on criminal charges. Netanyahu tried to get some leeway from personally appearing for the trial, but the presiding judges dismissed his appeal on Wednesday. Netanyahu is accused of misusing his power to grant favors to one of the owners of telecom giant Bezek in return for positive and favorable coverage by his new site, Walla. In another bid to gain positive coverage, Netanyahu also allegedly favored a newspaper, Yediot Aharonot, against its industry rival. He is accused of corruption and misuse of public office for personal gains as well. After being indicted last November, Netanyahu's parliament immunity plea was withdrawn in January. If convicted, he may have to serve more than 10 years in prison. Now going to Myanmar, the Myanmarese government has submitted a report to the International Court of Justice on the steps taken to protect the Rohingyas on Saturday. The report was submitted in response to a provisional order passed by the ICJ in January. The order demanded that the government take steps to protect the Rohingyas from further harm and violence and submit periodic reports. The report would be the first of its kind since the widespread violence began in Rakhine state in 2017 and displaced over 700,000 Rohingyas. The Myanmarese military and the civilian government led by Aung San Suu Kyi is facing a trial at the ICJ after a complaint was filed by Gambia. The accusations against the Myanmarese state include grave human rights violations and charges that amount to crimes against humanity. 
The violence reportedly led to the killing of over 24,000 Rohingyas and the rape and physical abuse of thousands more. It also caused the largest refugee crisis in the region since the Vietnam War. Rohingya activists questioned the genuineness of the report and the measures announced by the government in April to supposedly quell the violence. Several Rohingya activists who are currently operating in exile in Bangladesh have alleged that the violence and crackdown on the community continues even now. Many journalists have also been arrested. Finally, today, May 25th, is African Liberation Day. The day marks the formation of the Organization of African Unity at Addis Ababa in Ethiopia in 1963. In an interview aired on Pan-African Television, Justice Henaku of the Socialist Forum of Ghana talks about the significance of this day. Uh, what would you like people around the world to know about Africa Liberation Day? A message uh, to the youth of Africa, wherever they are, uh, on this day as we are trying to revive the Pan-African spirit of Africa Liberation Day. Well, uh, my message is that simple, that the youth forms the greatest number of the population in Africa and elsewhere. And that dependency, which is a mirage anyway, but we are made to think that we are so helpless, we should de be dependent on others for everything. It is, it is wrong, it's not right. And that self-reliance, looking into ourselves, researching our history, looking for our, our heroes, the resistance, the history of resistance amongst us, the history of the unity with other groups is important for us to know in order to equip ourselves, in order to lay the foundations for today's solidarity for all those who are struggling uh, for freedom and liberation. And Pan-Africanism can do that. And it's unfortunate the African unity is taking the path of copying the European Union. Yeah, yeah, you understand, because that was not the original intention of the Organization of African Unity. The European Union is a union of capital against the, 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 the labor. Pan-Africanism is not so. African unity is not a unity of capital because we ourselves our capital is subservient to that of uh, imperialist capital european capital and american capital you understand so on this day i want us to hold our love the banner of solidarity i want us to remember the 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 oppression uh under which the cubans and the venezuelans and the Iranians are undergoing against the, the, the Yankee imperialists, the Americans, warmongering. Pan-Africanism is for peace, it's not for war. If it goes to war, then it's a just war. It's a just war against evil, the evil of apartheid. It's a just war against the evils of uh, colonialism. It's a just war against the evils of exploitation. Other than that, it does not undertake wars of conquest. But the Americans war against Venezuela, Venezuela is for the resources of the Venezuelans. Against the Cubans is for the resources of the Cubans. Against the Iranians is for the oil of the Iranians. And that can't be right. We must always be on the side of right. So that's my message for this auspicious day yeah, of African Liberation so Thank you so much for making the time yeah. uh, to speak with us. And I hope wherever you are in the world uh, watching this video, uh, you will remember the struggle of Africans uh, who fought to come together and bring an end to colonialism, uh, who are still in the fight uh, to liberate themselves on this African Liberation Day. The struggle continues.
And this is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Yeah,